Hi there, and welcome back to Transformation Success Television Network. This is Dr. Barbara Young, and I have here my host, Les Brown, and I have my other host, Mr. Hammond Bolden, today. So, thank you for coming back, because we've got part two, and you don't want to miss this. So, I want you right now, call your friends, tell them to please tune in, listen in, because we've got something great for you. More words of wisdom from Mr. Les Brown. So Les, I have another question I wanted to ask you. Yes. And it was, you know, you have all of this inside of you, and when you do your speeches and when you're doing your storytelling, where does it come from? <laughs> well, we are taught, as you know, to study to show thyself approved. I decided when I decided to become involved in this area mm -hmm. that I would be the message that I bring, that you have to invest in yourself. And when I think about during the middle of the recession, Warren Buffett was asked the question, what's the most important investment you can make? And here's a guy that has mm -hmm. billions of dollars in real estate, billions of dollars in the stock mm -hmm. market. He said, the most important investment you can make is in yourself. Earl Nightingale said, you don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. And so when I read Dr. Carter G. Woodson's book, The oh, Miseducation yes. of the Negro, yes. he said, if you can determine what a man shall think, you never have to concern yourself with what he will do. He said, if you can make a man feel inferior, you never have to compel him to seek an inferior status, for he will seek it himself. Yep, that's right. And if you can make a man feel justly an outcast, never have to order him to go to the back door. He'll go he without being told. And if there's no door, his very nature will demand one. And so I decided I disciplined myself and made the commitment to read two to three books a month. Mm -hmm. I did an, an event for Bishop T.D. Jakes and somebody counted the number of my quotes in an hour and a half presentation and I did 217 and never repeated myself. So this is my passion. Mm -hmm. This is my life. Mm -hmm. There's a scripture that said if a man should gain his life, he must lose it. And first, mm -hmm. I didn't understand it, but mm -hmm. I think that we were not born to work for a living but to live our making, and living right. our making right. will make right. our living. Right. So when I speak, I lose myself in it. It is my magnificent obsession. When I speak, I I go all in, mm -hmm. because my yes, goal is to change lives individually mm -hmm. and collectively mm -hmm. so that the people who are in that experience will yes. leave there feeling better about themselves, yes. Yes. but talking about my story and how it helped them to get a breakthrough to go to that next level. I think that's wonderful. And one of the things I think too, that I hear you saying, and I've heard this too, if you have nothing in, there's nothing to give. Nothing Absolutely. from nothing leads nothing. Yes. So it's about inputting something there and wisdom, words of wisdom, you know. And uh, I have often uh, talked to many successful speakers and coaches and people, they read a lot yes. and they're reading and feeding their spirit, you know. And so it will come out of you. Yes, yes. it will. And that's an exciting thing. When you are inspiring and motivating people, I believe that inspiration and motivation are perfumes you can't sprinkle on others without getting a few drops of mm -hmm, yourself. Absolutely. That that's right. You are transformed. Yeah, I'm not wearing right. a crown. I'm like yeah. the lady who said, Lord, I ain't what I want to be, ain't what I'm going to be, and thank God I show ain't what I was. Okay, so <laughs> okay, I'm okay. still growing. Yeah, I, I, yes, this is a yes, new yes, chapter yes, for me that yes, yes. I'm still writing, and my best work has not been done yet. I and, believe that. And I've got to train seven people that will surpass me. And if any of your listeners are watching, if they have a story and want to get coaching and want to invest in themselves, they can reach me at lesbrown77 at gmail.com. Seven is my lucky number. All right. All I'm right. one of seven children. I was born February the 17th. My social security number is 267. My address is 2737. So the seven. Seven is my lucky that's number. That's okay, Les Brown. Okay, and you can get his seven seminar seven. for 1997. And no, that's yeah. not true. <laughs> But we do take two steps, all right? <laughs> but Les Brown, 77 at gmail.com. All I want are seven serious people that are hungry to that get hungry. their message yeah. out. Right. Yeah, because right. most people aren't hungry. Yeah. yeah. You have to be yeah. hungry. Yes, That's yes, true. Yes, yes. That is something. You know, this is the era what the late Peter Drucker called the era of the three C's, accelerated change, overwhelming yeah. complexity, and, and tremendous competition. They have, I just saw a robot in the drugstore, Walgreens, 
that you can say, please tell me where I can get the perfume. And the robot say, follow me. <laughs> I said, come on. <laughs> they got robots doing room service, oh, you know, yeah. selling hamburgers yeah. at McDonald's. I said, oh, my goodness. So you have to die to who you are now to give birth to the entrepreneur yeah. in you. Ooh, yeah. If you're serious, people who are not entrepreneurial, they have skinny children. <laughs> You had to be an entrepreneur. That's it. That's good. Yeah. I had, That's you know, good. I had, I had a question for you, Les. And yeah. and um, I've actually watched uh, several of your videos, but there was one that came to mind as I was watching that. Is you know what are you? Because Dr. Young had mentioned on a couple of shows that success can mean differently for different people. Yes. But I wanted to ask you if you could tell me your definition of success. I'm glad you asked me that question. Someone asked me that question in another way and said, what has been the highest, most successful moment that you recognize in your life? And it's when my children got together and they said, Dad, we understand why you missed all the special occasions. Dad, we were angry with you when you were in pursuit of the dream. However, we graduated from college with no debt. We're now adults. We're pursuing our dream. And we now understand. <laughs> we love you. We are proud of you. And we are just amazed at what you've been able to accomplish with no college education and, and being able to tr transform people's lives around the world and, and build a multi-million dollar company. I saw something the other day, an interview with Steve Harvey mm -hmm. that had a transformative impact on me because mm -hmm. I'm a father, I'm a grandfather, mm -hmm. and I'm a great-grandfather. Mm -hmm. And he went to the hospital with a guy to visit his mm -hmm. grandmother. And he overheard the grandmother ask this young man, do you know what your great-grandfather's name is? And oh, he said, no. no. And she said, because he didn't leave you anything. If he had left you something, you would know what his name is. And so when I heard that, my great-grandchildren, I have three great-grandsons, my grandchildren and my three great-grandsons, they will know what my name is because a good man leaves a legacy for his children and for his children's children. So I'm in legacy building and teaching others how to build a legacy. And you know what? That's interesting because that was a question I was going to ask you was about the legacy that you want to leave because it's so important that you do that. God has given you so much less yes. and it would be a shame if that wasn't transferred and into duplicated. and duplicated as, with as many individuals because you have been given a, a absolute wonderful And gift. I've been given grace. I'm a 21 yes, year yes, cancer yes. conqueror. Yes. You know, 21 Great. years ago, I was Great. diagnosed with prostate cancer. Great. My PSA, which stands for prostate-specific antigen, was 2,400. Wow, wow. And it metastasized wow. to seven areas of my wow. body. Oh, wow. And the oncologist said, why are you smiling? Did you hear what I said? I said, yes. Seven is my lucky number. That means that cancer getting to hell beat out of it. <laughs> Go. Yes. But on the other hand, God said, not your time. No. There's a lot more work that I have for you to do. Yes. And You've you got to transfer information yes. to others. So, no, it's not time. It's right. not your time. I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. So, And it's not my time. I'm not going anytime soon. I, I told right. the Lord, yeah. I said, Dip, I want to make it to 99, okay, mm -hmm. and a half. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I want to make it beyond a hundred in my right mind. Yes, well, okay. yes, yes, which yes, I don't have that much yes. to work with. <laughs> you know, you know. Now the DT was taken off. Now. Yeah, right, okay, that right. was okay, taken yeah. off. So, <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, I was, you know, I used to ask my mother, Mama, why do y'all say thank the Lord for waking up in my right mind this morning? She said, Don't worry, you understand you one get day. Old enough, you find out. I went in the room to look for something the other day. I got in there, I couldn't remember what I was looking for. <laughs> came out, remember what I was looking for, went in and found it. Then I couldn't remember what I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I thank the Lord for waking me up in my right mind this morning. I park in a parking lot, can't find my car. God said, can I pick you up and drive you around first? I had too much pride. Then after he passed me like the fifth time, oh, I said, yeah. Yeah. Yes, so we got on it. He said, can you tell me what your car looked like? I said, I can't remember. <laughs> I just 
got the master key. <laughs> oh my God. So man, I'm going to sleep early. I'm doing everything I can. I'm taking Gago Baloba. I'm right. drinking aloe right. juice, wheatgrass, you name it. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Lord, keep me in my right mind. That's right. I'm praying. I'm chanting. No me your whole renge kio. I'm doing everything. I call on Jesus, Yahweh, Allah, the whole gang. Yeah, yeah. Please come and help my yes. friends. Don't want to meet help nobody. me. Don't want to miss anybody. Oh, this has absolutely been so wonderful to spend absolutely. this time with you and Thank to you. laugh and to just be so transparent. Are there any questions you've got of me? Because well, you know, I've been just grilling yes. you because well, I have a lot more I'm sure want well, to ask. What I wanted to know is if you look at your life and and you look at what you've accomplished, what is the major goal that you have not achieved that you want to achieve? And so the reason I ask you that, I'm in a place where mm -hmm. the Russian author, Leo Tolstoy, he said, as I face inevitable death, what in the meaning and purpose of my life that will not be undone mm -hmm. or destroyed when I'm gone? So what is it that you're building that you want to create that will not be undone or destroyed when you cross over, when you're 99 and a half? That's an interesting question you asked me because I got the answer 30 years ago when God called me to do yes. what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it would be 30 years in the making though for well, me to arrive at that point. But that was to impart wisdom mm -hmm. and to transfer exactly the knowledge and the wisdom and to create women warriors. Mm -hmm. Women warriors who know who they are, who love God, and who are able to spread the love because they know who they are and secure in it. That's powerful. That work will not be undone or destroyed when you're gone. Right. Because the people, the women, and the men whose lives that you've yes. touched, yes. and the lives that they will touch, and the lives that they will touch, that we're all in God's pyramid, right. ignited by your mindset, your decision to live a good life, and to ignite the spirit in you to transform people all around the world. I want to add a caveat to that too, because when when God told me women, he wasn't leaving out men, because what he said was making these women strong and loving and secure in themselves, they're able to be the right helpmate for the man. Yes. To be that woman, to help that man, because he designed us to be helpmates, not to compete, but to complete. Yes. Well, most women, unfortunately, are uh, help me. <laughs> you know, I mean, yes. are dealing with men who are saying help me, right. as yes. opposed to being a helpmate. Yes. Help you know, yes. they say. You know, a friend of mine wrote a book called "Women Who Carry Their Men," and I just think I know that that there's, I know there's she too is. many grown boys out here <laughs> mm -hmm. and sperm yeah. donors yes. who are not facing responsibility right. of men. playing right. the roles that they're supposed to be. Right. Well, what what do you think that, uh, given the current climate and environment, when we, we're looking at our millennials, we're looking at a new group of young people coming along, and the research says that by 2020, we're looking at 11 million millennials. Your son is a millennial. He's sort of yes. at the farther end yes. of it. But he's just an incredible young man, and I want thank to thank you. you for having such a wonderful son. We're going to interview him, too, and yes. talk about him and his goals and where he's been and how having a father like you <laughs> and and the impact on his life. But what, where do you think that that we're going and our millennials how do we these do young do? people are very interesting my son john leslie i have five boys and five girls and the lord said be fruitful and multiply <laughs> you were. i took him serious <laughs> you know i look at you too long you won't be able to pass a rabbit test <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, most most people out there, they're, they're too young to understand they're what that right. means. They still don't right. know what that means, right. yeah. You know, I tell you, I, I, especially John Leslie, he's my youngest, and, mm -hmm. and he's a genius. He, yeah, he's, he is. He's, he's just Social incredible. Yes, and he and he helps me to do the things that I need to do. And there are times I look at him and say, you about to make me lose my mind. Okay. Up in here, <laughs> up in here, you about to make me act a fool. Right. Up in here. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a part of the parenting process right, right, because right. whenever I look at him, I, I just can hear my mother's voice saying, good, now you know now what you I know. went through with you. <laughs> okay, because I, 
was a problem child. You hear me? Right. And so I used to talk to my brother. I said, Wesley, why don't you get in trouble? They think that I'm crazy. He said, you are. <laughs> I look at my son, John. Like, he reminds me so much of my son. It yeah. is yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. So he keep blisters on my knees. I'm always praying for you. <laughs> but I'm so proud of him. I yeah, love him you so should much. be. You really yes. should be. He's really, really wonderful. And I'm really proud of this gentleman over here. Really. I mean, it's just a blessing to have you in my life, to have you by my side. Mm -hmm. And for those of you out there, this is my son. Yes. Yes. I was nine. <laughs> Yes, I love it. But, but I yeah. love him. I love him. And he is, he works with me. Mm -hmm. And we just, actually, I report to him to tell yeah. you the truth. But yeah, they but, run my life. My kids <laughs> run my life like that. Yeah. yeah. But I'm so glad the two of y'all believe in gray hair because I don't. <laughs> Believe in it. My kids say, oh, Daddy, you look so distinguished with your gray hair. I'm 72. I'm not trying to look distinguished. I'm trying to look young. Right. <laughs> okay, right. But y'all look so me. beautiful and so distinguished. God Thank bless you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Thank and you, you are just you. breathtakingly beautiful. Thank you so much. You know Thank black you. don't crack, honey. <laughs> it might get a little ashy. <laughs> My medication wear it off. Y'all better close it out. Yes, yes. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. I'm sorry. See, this, <laughs> is, this has been wonderful. Awesome. And probably many of you are seeing a side of Mr. Les Brown that you've not seen before. And that's wonderful. This is our natural today. So we want to thank you for listening and viewing the show today with my special guest, Mr. Les Brown, and my other special guest, my son, Mr. Hammond Bowden. So we'll be in tune with you next week where we're going to be interviewing his son, John Leslie. Yes. 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 May I so, say one last thing? Yes, you can. You have greatness in you. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. All right. right. Yes. Thank that's you. It. Any Thank last you. words from you, Mr. Bolden? Once again, folks, I'm just so honored as you, those who are viewing, and then those who are listening to be with this this awesome, wonderful man. And we just thank God for that. So again, uh, I'm just honored. Thank you. Let's I'm rally. a legend in my own mind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much for listening. And thank you for the viewers out there. Tell your friends they got to watch this show. And this is Dr. Barbara Young signing off. Have a very, very blessed week.